case study circumstance where we had a, a client, this is not an atypical situation, where, where they were looking to speed up the uh, approval process for their new glaucoma treatment. And the idea is that it would be, in theory at least, quicker and simpler to collect data on surrogates for the true vision affecting endpoint in their trial than it would be to wait for the data to manifest for that true endpoint, right? So we can get data sooner on potential surrogates than we can for the true endpoint. The question thereafter, of course, as you'd imagine, was what are the surrogates that you could potentially consider as being plausible? Um, and there's a few other considerations there as well. So we worked closely with the client's clinical ophthalmology team uh, to narrow down essentially a, a breadth of plausible surrogates to, to shortlist, the biomarkers that we deemed clinically plausible that we agreed were being collected in the client's trial to a, a sufficient extent and, and quality. Um, and they were likely to be routinely collected in clinical practice. And this is really important, of course, because going back to that first step that we mentioned, the systematic literature review, this is a key consideration that they're clinically normally collected because this is going to be speaking to the likelihood of finding sufficient quantity and quality of clinical trial data that's going to allow us to be able to run through these steps that we've mentioned and to successfully validate biomarkers for the true endpoint of interest. Um, so we, as, as, as said, um, followed the process, process that we, we, covered, we covered five minutes ago and ran that double reviewer SLR. Uh, we plotted all collected ARM and trial level data into our respective two-step correlation analyses, um, ran these meta-correlation analyses and estimated the surrogate threshold effect uh, for the what we found to be the single best performing surrogate um, biomarker based on its arm level correlation and its treatment effect correlation. What was really interesting was regarding this single biomarker, and actually it was found across a number of different potential biomarkers as well, that actually the in our scenario analyses you got stronger correlations for this biomarker uh, between the biomarker and the true endpoint, the newer the data was. So the more recently the studies were published, the better it got, which is interesting because we were, by narrowing the field down to more new uh, studies, the smaller the sample size ultimately that we were, we were dealing with. So actually we found stronger, more, more statistical significance and better results the more recent the data. And this speaks to some extent to a change in treatment paradigm. It was felt and the, uh, there was a lot of ensuing discussion around how therefore the couch and caveat what we're, what we're dealing with here. Anyway, ultimately the, the study, the project, um, uh, we feel uh, proved um, useful in, in assisting our client to, to expedite appropriate evidence gathering for the purpose of gaining um, approval for their new treatments and, and the process continues. 